This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton. U.S. President Joe Biden gave an update on evacuations from Afghanistan on Sunday. He said none of the planes leaving Kabul are civilian aircraft and that all evacuees will be taken from Kabul to a secondary point for security checks before flying to the United States. President Biden said in a televised address on Sunday that the number of people evacuated from Kabul will change from day to day. Earlier Sunday, the White House said the U.S. had evacuated 7,400 people from Kabul in the past 24 hours. Mr. Biden said as many as 11,000 were evacuated in a 36-hour period over the weekend. Tens of thousands more await a ride out of Kabul. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said Sunday the Defense Department is using civilian passenger planes to help with the evacuation. Biden said all flights out of Kabul first land in military bases in a handful of countries where non-U.S. citizens will undergo background checks and security screenings. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told Fox News Sunday that the latest group of evacuees left on 60 flights, many of them headed to Mideastern countries. There have been chaotic scenes at the Kabul airport as Afghans and foreigners alike try to flee Afghanistan following the Taliban takeover a week ago. Rescue crews on Sunday searched for more than 50 people reported missing in the southeastern U.S. state of Tennessee after flooding from extraordinarily heavy, heavy rains left at least 21 people dead. The unprecedented flooding took out roads, cell phone towers and telephone lines. Emergency workers resorted to searching door to door for those reported missing. Downpours on Saturday rapidly turned creeks that run behind backyards and through the town of Waverly, Tennessee, into raging rapids. VOA News. The death toll in the major earthquake that struck Haiti on August 14th has risen to 2,207, according to authorities on Sunday, as attacks on aid convoys have complicated efforts to bring relief to survivors. New bodies have been found in the south, according to the country's Civil Protection Service, adding that 344 people remain missing and more than 12,000 have been listed as injured. Search and rescue workers are continuing to pick through the jumbled mounds of debris left by the powerful 7.2 magnitude quake. But hopes of finding survivors are fading by the hour. Haitian authorities claim nearly 600,000 people were directly affected by the disaster and are in urgent need of humanitarian assistance. But efforts to deliver water, food and medical supplies to quake victims have been complicated, not just by road and bridge outages, but also by attacks on aid convoys by gangs threatening violence. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi on Sunday met with Japan's foreign minister and called on Tokyo to release the Islamic Republic's funds that have been frozen in Japan because of U.S. sanctions over its nuclear program. Japan and, to a larger extent, South Korea are both major exporters of technology. They hold billions of dollars in Iranian assets. These funds have been frozen since former U.S. President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew Washington from a landmark nuclear deal and reimposed sanctions on Tehran in 2018. Washington said in mid-July it is allowing Iran to use the frozen funds to settle debts in South Korea and Japan, but insisted it did not allow any to be transferred to Tehran itself. Talks between Iran and world powers aimed at reviving the 2015 accord have stalled since late June. The United States has been involved only indirectly in those talks. The office of Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, said Sunday the president signed a decree imposing sanctions on Andriy Derkach, the Ukrainian lawmaker accused by the United States of being a Russian agent and interfering in U.S. elections. The sanctions include an asset freeze, a ban on capital withdrawals, and restrictions on his transferring resources of any kind. A top Ukrainian security official said in a briefing on Friday that Ukraine is sanctioning Derkach along with members of the Russian military and Russian judges. Derkach has previously denied wrongdoing and said he's being targeted for exposing corruption. More on that and all the stories we're covering is available at our website, voanews.com. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.